Hi there, and welcome to a new episode of Extreme Banding, the slow YouTube camera channel dealing with various photographic nightmares. I am living in one of them right now, December in the north of Sweden. Weather is so-so, and the sun never rises. There's no time or place for photography. So what can you do? Think about which all-mechanical rangefinder camera with a cost below 1,000 euros you would like to use for the rest of your life, perhaps. Effective base length. This mysterious term that is often used regarding focusing accuracy. But what is it and how much do you need? First off, you have the rangefinder base length. Then you have the magnification. The effective base length is the actual length times the magnification factor. As the Leica 2 Model D has a magnification of 1 to 1 or life size, the effective base is 38 mm times 1. A Leica M has 68.5 mm base length times 0 0.72 magnification, which equals about 49 mm. Here we can see a comparison on how it looks in practice. First, the Shanghai 58.2 with 0 0.7 magnification and 38 mm base length. Then we have the Zorki 5 with the same magnification but a longer 67 mm base. You can see how this reflects in use when I focus these cameras from infinity to the post in the focusing patch. The Zorki 5 allows for finer focusing adjustments. But when does this matter? And how much do you need? This is a graph I found on a forum where people discussed and did tests to verify. And I don't know if it's perfectly accurate, but it's the best I can do. And this is just, you know, the mathematical or whatever accuracy of the rangefinders. And it requires, you know, these figures are for if you have perfect vision and so on and so on. So for the cameras tested here, Let's do the shortest. The shortest effective base, the Canon L1 with the 35mm viewfinder. That's an effective base of 16.4mm. It ends up here. And let's put it like this. And for a 35mm lens, according to this graph, it would be possible to focus a 35.0.8 lens at wide open with this base length. Not a big problem then. If we move on, the Canon 4 SB2 with its 50 millimeter. We have that here. With this effective range range base of 25 millimeters, it could focus a 50 millimeter lens at f 1.1 or something like that. Okay, so it doesn't seem to that be that big of a problem. Of course, we move on the L1 at the next magnification. It's, it's up there, so it could focus a 50 millimeter lens at 0 0.8. The Vera camera, 35, it has several lenses. So we have to think a bit here. The Vera there. So we have a 35mm lens, no problem, 50mm lens, of course no problem. And then it has a 100mm f4 lens. f4 is here, 100mm is somewhere in this region. So pretty, probably adapted for that. Why this obsession over wide rangefinder bases? Well, mostly it has to do with longer lenses. You know, there are a lot of compact cameras that have, have really short effective base lengths. Let's move on. The next one we have is the Canon P, and that's 41 millimeters. For a 135 millimeter lens, it would still not be accurate at f4, f4.5 maybe. And other lenses like an 
85 millimeter should be possible at f2 thereabouts and the other lenses no problem at all the Soki 3 and Soki 4s well you might understand why they increase the magnification because the Jupiter 9 85 millimeter f2 2 is here it's right in this region so a little bit of a margin but still the 135 millimeter lens it's it's just above f4 so not quite there and they had the Soki 5 and Fed 2 which would who would have managed 135 millimeter f4 then we have cameras like the Leica M's as they've been since the M2 basically with some variations that would do a 135 at f3.6 maybe or something like that a 90 millimeter at f1.6 maybe so it would do 85 1.4 probably the other ones no problem but as you see the standard Leica with 39 millimeter base would struggle with the 75 millimeter f1.4 and also Foster 90s 135 not really a good option with the original ones and then we have the 2f and m6 with 0.85 millimeter magnification it would be just over f3 at 135 the rest basically no problem so what did Leica do then well when they did the M3 good for 135 f2.8 anyhow I think this is mostly a description on why rangefinder cameras are not really suited for long lenses they are very good at focusing wide-angle lenses which you know SLRs really are not because it's so difficult to see the depth of field rangefinder cameras are super wide-angle lenses but as you go longer it really gets problematic and you have to make a lot of compromises with the camera to make it possible but of course rangefinder cameras are always a pleasure to use so people who do this I can understand it but then requires a lot of the camera and it's difficult to combine wide angle photography with long lenses in the same camera if you don't use auxiliary finders but to add to this there are a lot of other things that makes it easy and nice to focus and I think longer rangefinder base means a camera that is easier to focus the Canon L1 at the low magnification everything becomes so small it becomes difficult and if your wish vision is bad I think high magnification is probably better even if the effective base is not as long anyhow I think the easiest one to focus in general these cameras is this one the easiest one to focus I've ever tried was the Kiev 2 you know contacts copy which is up here in effective base but had a magnification of about 0.7 think later Kiev 4s have a higher magnification but it was really really easy to focus with that camera and I bet an M3 is the top of the line when it comes to focusing. To conclude the effective base length should be more than sufficient in most rangefinders when using lenses 50 millimeters and wider. A longer base length can however make the experience better but other factors probably matter more for focusing accuracy like camera movement when recomposing, focus shift in the lens, rangefinder calibration and the quality of the focusing patch for the photography I do with film and rangefinders. The effective base length of a Barnack is definitely more than enough.